What's going on, hobby family? Today, we're gonna take a look at how to make realistic weathering effects. These effects can be used on almost any genre, but it works really well in 40K, Necromunda, any post-apocalyptic war games, or even historicals like World War II. I'll be using the contents of the Sector Mechanicus from the skirmish game, Kill Team. This set is perfect for demonstrating the different types of techniques that we'll be using because of the nice wide panels. Now the techniques that I'm going to show you were shown to me years ago by some of the OG of weathering, model tank painters. I'm just going to be adding my own spin to it. To start us off, we're going to target all the metallic parts that we desire to be metallic with a heavy dry brush of warp block bronze by Citadel. A heavy dry brush is similar to a dry brush, however the paint is much wetter. Think of it as stick versus flowing. Ideally, paint is left everywhere but the recesses of the model. Once complete, I target the same areas with a regular dry brush of lead belcher. This method allows us to complete our metallics quickly while still generating an easy effect. With our metallics done, it's now time to start on our rust base coat. To apply this technique, we're going to be using coral sponges. Coral. 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 I picked up these sponges at my local hobby store. What I like about them is the texture and finish they give once we apply them with paint. Now, if the piece is too big, that's what she said, you can always rip it into a more manageable size. For our base coat, we're going to start with Burnt Red from Pro Curl, and we're going to be applying it to any area that we want rust. Don't be afraid if you touch some of our previous metallic parts, as those areas can always be touched up afterwards. After all, this is meant to be a fun exercise, so have fun with it. Next, we're going to use Burnt Orange and repeat the previous step, but allow some of the red to pop through. If it looks like you're adding texture to the model, that's perfect, as we want a gritty surface. Coming in with a brighter orange, we're going to dab our sponge on top of our previous layer. The areas you want to leave brighter rust should be targeted with this color. Last but not least, we're going to use golden yellow to gently apply highlights. This color is going to be used sparingly and only in certain areas. Now it's time for the secret ingredient. We're going to be using pickling salt. Pickling salt is different from regular table salt in that the granules are larger and will give us a more realistic rust effect. You're also going to need some water. To apply the water in a controlled method, I like using a pipette. Simply apply water where you want the rust to show and sprinkle our salt on the water. The salt will stick to the wet surface. This happens because the sodium ions in salt are attracted to the oxygen in water molecules, and chloride ions are attracted to hydrogen. Watching Bill Nye as a kid actually pays off. For a concentrated rust effect, you can apply the salt close up, or for a more random appearance, drop it from higher up. Or if you're a real gangster. With all of our areas applied with salt, we're gonna wait 24 hours for our terrain to dry so we can move on to the next step. Okay, so today is the next day and I have to admit it came out pretty good. All the water is now dry off the miniature and the salt is pretty much hanging on there. I know eventually when I go in with an airbrush, some of this might blow away, but that's, that's okay because it's going to give us a lot of variation in the different type of rust effect. So, let's get to it. We're going to start with a base coat of mahogany and cover up all the salted panels with an airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, don't worry, this can be used with a rattle can. And also don't worry about the overspray hitting the metal as we can still touch that up later on. Our first and only highlight is going to be made with ivory and we're going to apply it over the mahogany base coat. Make some areas brighter while letting other areas have the mahogany base coat come through. Once it's dry, you can use a brush or an old toothbrush to remove the salt from the terrain. If you leave little scratch marks in the paint, don't worry, as this will add character to the overall piece. <music> Cut 
coming back with Lead Belcher, I go over all the metallic areas that were covered with our rust or airbrush overspray. We're gonna tie everything together now with some oil paints. We're gonna start by massaging the bottles first so that there is an equal distribution between paint and oil that the paint is suspended in. The colors I'm gonna be using are Burnt Umber, Van Dyke Brown, Burnt Sienna, Cadium Orange, and Yellow Ochre. I'm using these colors as they are natural colors and will complement our previous rust colors. We'll be using toothpicks to apply each paint as we add small dots to our exposed rust effect. It doesn't need to be precise, so have fun and apply the dots at random. I like using cheap flat synthetic brushes to apply my paint thinner as it doesn't ruin our expensive brushes and there is more surface area to work with. Simply dip your brush into the paint thinner and brush it in a downwards motion to create rust streaks. This simulates as though our model has been out in the rain or has been exposed to the elements. If you find that some areas are too weathered, simply add more thinner and remove the paint. Next, we're gonna be using a dark brown pigment powder. This is going to simulate dirt and debris collecting over time. If you don't have the brand that I'm using, don't worry, because there are tons of other companies who make really cool pigment powders. Last but not least, we're gonna be adding AK's streaking grime to areas where there might be oil or grease buildup. These will mostly be in crevices of the model. Now this step is optional, but you can always sponge on silver to make certain areas that look like metallic scratches. And that's it. We used simple techniques that made some awesome looking terrain that's ready for the tabletop. But do you know what's better than awesome looking terrain that's ready for the tabletop? You thought I was gonna say B-roll, didn't you? I am B-roll. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I wanna thank everyone who's subscribed and joined my Patreon. I just wanna let you know that I see you and I thank you. However, I do see you, Mike. It's about time you subscribe. I know you're not subscribed. I wasn't gonna say anything, but I felt compelled. Classic Mike. Speaking of Patreon, thanks so much to all of my current patrons. Shout out to X, Slipknot Brian X, and all of my loyal patrons. Thank you guys so much. I also have some pretty exciting news. As some of you may know, one of my favorite paints is Pro Krill by Monument Hobbies. Just recently, I became an affiliate partner. So if you wanna get your hands on some of the paints that I love to use, like in this video and in other videos, do make sure to click the link in the description where you can save up to 5% off on your next order. Doing so not only means that you're gonna get some wicked paints, but also helps support the channel and make it grow faster. So until the next time we meet, Hobby family, peace on the streets and make sure to